Atomic radius is the most important periodic trend in chemistry, or it's also called periodicity trend, because it will help explain all the other trends of ionization energy, electron affinity, and electronegativity if you have to learn those. If you'd like a copy of this Google Doc, go to the description below, click the link, and it'll force a copy of this document that you can have for yourself. What I'm going to do in this video is go through the definition of atomic radius. I'm going to describe the trend and talk about metals and nonmetals. And I'm going to explain in detail why that column or group trend exists and also why that trend exists in a row in a period. And those are two different explanations as to why those exist. So let's just get started with the definition. It's the distance from the nucleus to the outer electron shell, also called the outer energy level of an atom. So if you look at this picture, here's your um, nucleus. I got a little bit, gotta get erased that there. <laughs> here's my nucleus, and then here is the outer electron shell. Now you might be saying, why don't they just measure that? They don't, they have to measure it by taking one half the distance between these adjacent, means they're right next to each other, typically that means they're bonded, nuclei of two identical atoms. So I'm going to zoom into kind of this picture that I created and say, okay, here is my nucleus of one atom. It's positive because there's protons and neutrons. And instead of saying, oh, I wish I could just measure from the nucleus to the outer electron shell, which would be the definition of atomic radius right there, because this outer electron shell is consistently and constantly moving, we can't easily measure the outer barrier. So what chemists do is they start from one nuclei to another adjacent nuclei. They take that distance from here to here, and then they cut that in half, so they take half of it, and then that would equal the distance from the nucleus to then the outer electron cloud. The nucleus is slightly moving, but nowhere near the electrons, and it's much easier to get that stationary distance. Okay, so that's the first thing that's a very kind of nitpicky definition. What I've done is created kind of a, a periodic table here for you to look at with all these different atoms. And what you want to notice, I'm going to highlight them, is if it is a metal, so I'm going to highlight all the metals in green. So aluminum is a metal, and then we're going to include gallium and tin. And then this is where there's some disagreement whether polonium belongs with the metals or the metalloids. I am just going to say, let's just throw it in with the metalloids. And there could be some disagreement. If you look on the internet, you'll find all kinds of disagreement about that. So let's just say, fine, can be a metalloid. So these are my metals. Then let's do the ones that we're confident are non-metals. And what I want you to look for is, do you see a pattern in the atomic radii of metals versus non-metals? So as we're kind of highlighting all of these, go down to radon. Astatine is another one where there's some disagreement. What I'm going to do is throw it in with the metalloids and then kind of come around like that. So those are all my non-metals. And I hope at this point you can see that metals tend to be much larger than non-metals. And I'll do purple here for the metalloids. And the non-metals are smaller. And then the metalloids kind of through here, they're kind of like the in-between of being properties of both. But they're also, their radii seem to be a little bit in between both. And those are the metalloids. So one thing that we can say for sure is that the largest atoms look like they are definitely in the lower portion of the periodic table. And they also look like they are farther left. So you'll hear me say that a lot if you were one of my students, is that in the lower left, they are very large. You might also want to include, these are called the period or rows, and I've only included up to period six. And then the groups go this way, one, two, and then if you continue going, it is, you know, this would actually be three, and then this ends up being 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and finally 18. So those are going to be my groups or my families, and my periods or my rows go this way. So we're going to do is we're going to write how they get larger. So I'm going to stick with this being increases. You know, so if you need to put that these are small and these are large, if that helps you, that would be a good idea. And then these are smaller on the upper portion compared to those that are larger. And again, in our lower left of the periodic table, they have the largest 
atomic radius. I'm going to do AR for atomic radius, okay? Plus, you can tend to see that metals are larger in atomic radius compared to nonmetals. All right, so let's just write this in words. So I'm going to write that the atomic radius increases, increases when, so these are just kind of some fancy word, descending. And that just means that we're going down to the bottom, okay, descending down, descending the column, and you could put or group. And it increases, we'll keep with increases, um, as you, or as you travel, you could say, right, be careful, right to left, in a row, which is also called a period, of the periodic table. So to keep it simple, I've seen a lot of you know books and things, I think it makes it kind of complicated. My point here is I wanna say as I go from, this is the easy one, as I go from top to bottom in a column, they get larger, and as I go from right to left, they also get larger. So I'm trying to kind of put pinpoint right here that my lower left are my largest, and you could do the opposite. My upper right are my smallest atomic radius. The other thing, again, is nonmetals tend to be much smaller, at least at the start, for their neutral atomic radii. All right, now let's go through why. This is where life gets a little bit more challenging. So why do they tend to get larger you know, that's the trend, okay, as you descend a column. So the easy thing to do is just go back to electron configuration. So 1s2, 2s1 is lithium's electron configuration, or it's helium, 2s1. So I've drawn kind of the fact that this has one, two energy levels. Sodium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and then 3s1. So you could shorten it and say that is neon, 3s1, and that has one, to three energy levels. I'm not gonna do the full configuration, I'm just gonna do what's called the noble gas configuration for the last two, just to save some room and time. Notice that it has one, two, three, four energy levels. That's a four, it's kind of messy four, but that's a four, okay? Four, and then if you look at rubidium as one, two, three, four, five, so, and then that would be, um, you may be able to predict it that you start with krypton and then five S1. The key here with this one, and this one's the easy one, I think, is that you can see that there are more energy shells or more energy levels. So what we're going to do is want to say atomic radius. This one's the easy one, okay? Atomic radius increases down a column, if you don't want to say descending, down a column or group, okay? Because, it's kind of like your claim evidence reasoning here, because... The atoms that are, that are, whoops, sorry, that are lower in the column have gained more, I'm just going to put energy levels or energy shells um, to hold the electron. So you don't really want to say more electrons. In fact, I'm going to kind of put that in here. You never want to say more electrons. You'll see why in a second. It's just bad policy because you'll see just a little bit. So never say, so as I put this, actually, I don't want to say, say never, <laughs> never say more electrons. With this one, you want to say there are um, they've gained or there's more energy levels, or if you don't want to say energy levels, you can say electron shells. All right, you could talk about shielding and all that, but I think the easiest thing for this one is just to say more electrons, depending on the level you're in. All right, now life is going to get more complicated, okay? So what I'm going to do is write out the electron configurations above, and you should really do the same. 1s2, 2s2. And then it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. They're going to get hard to kind of fit in here, so I'm going to try to sneak in a little bit smaller here. So these are the electron configurations for lithium, beryllium, carbon, or sorry, boron, carbon, nitrogen. 
I'm gonna gonna sneak out to fluorine right now, 1s2, 2s2, 2p, just for the sake of the video, 2p5. So I didn't actually do this one right here. I'll just kind of put like a line, okay? I didn't actually do those three right now. I just wanna make sure this video is not super long. Here's the key. There is the same energy level. So as I, I'm just gonna box this out, okay? So the number of protons is increasing, okay? Atomic number is increasing. But these all have the same energy level. If you want to put EL instead of energy, you know, E energy level. So that's where I would EL. So we can't talk about them gaining or losing energy levels or having more or less. They all actually fill their electrons to the second energy level. But it's this proton count that is increasing. So what effect does that have? You have to think about it like the protons in this nucleus here, they keep getting larger and larger. So I have some people that actually take in this, if this helps you, they actually take like the plus and they write it really small and then they kind of write it bigger and bigger and then maybe over here it's like really, you know, big proton count. What happens then is there's more protons in the nucleus to pull in the electrons that are all in the same energy level. So let me write that out. So atomic radius... And this is where I'm going to go a little against what we've been doing. I'm going to say that we're going to explain why it decreases. I think it's actually easier to say why is it decreasing from left to right. So it's going to go against our pattern a little, not, not against the pattern, but against us saying increasing all the time. So we're going to say atomic radius decreases from left to right. So if these are all in that same period, we're going left to right versus right to left, okay? So they're decreasing from left to right um, on the periodic table. Sometimes I just do PT for the periodic table. Um, uh, then we want to put because. That's kind of our claim. So because, I can write that better here. Getting used to writing on the iPad. Because in a row or period, in a, whoops, forgetting some words here. It's like in a row of the period the of the you can put up the periodic table again if you want to the energy level stays the same that's the key one of the keys here but there are more let's do p plus protons that's p plus protons added to the nucleus this is the tough one. This is the long one. So there, oops, let me clean that up a little bit. So there, there is a uh, larger pull. So it's called, you can call it a um, effective nuclear charge is the fancy word, but there's a larger pull on those electrons. going to do E minus. Um, in this, you know, in the same, this is the key. I'm going to say it quite a few times in the same, oops, sorry, messing up here today. I'm going to zoom in a little bit farther because it's easier to write the same energy level. So this is a long sentence, not the best. So this positive pull draws, oh, that's not, that's a draws, draws in the electrons. And I'm going to do this, therefore, that's a quick way to say therefore if you haven't learned shorthand. So therefore, um, causing the nucleus to, or causing, sorry, causing, not the nucleus, causing the atomic radius to shrink or make, make it smaller. Woo, just fit it. It's kind of squished there, but we made it. Uh, I think I should not have wrote that, put that box around it. That's kind of, this is kind of took to take up the room I was planned on or planning on using. So anyways, let's just go through it more time. So as the, the atomic radius decreases from left to right, so again, we're getting smaller from left to right, um, on the periodic table, because in a row of the periodic table, the energy level will stay the same. So they're all staying 2s, you know, then 2s2, 2p, but it's 2, it's energy level 2. Stays the same, but there are more protons. Okay, so as you go from lithium to beryllium, and maybe you even need to write down the protons. You know, it's three, then four, then out to nine. 
So the more, more protons added to the nucleus, so there's a larger pull on those, all of the electrons, okay, that are in the same energy levels. So if you want to say even in the same energy levels, plural, so this positive pull draws in, and you could say all the electrons causing the atomic radius to shrink. All right, so there we go. So we have, again, here is our definition. Here is our explanation. Kind of remember metals are larger, nonmetals are smaller. They're the largest in the lower left. And then why they get larger as you go down a column or a group, that's the easy one, I think. You gain a whole entire energy level or shell. So of course they get bigger. But again, don't say it's because more electrons. Say it's because they've gained more energy levels. Then, like I read twice already, it's really complicated uh, you know, to explain the decreasing or increasing uh, in a period. So make sure you kind of reread that. Really think about it. Think about magnets even. Um, you know, you got nine positive pulls here versus the fact that this one only has three. But the distance, you know, we're still out to energy level two. All right, chemists, I hope this helped. I'm going to make a video on ionization energy, so you can check that one out also. And I also will have a link to the Google Doc that will force a copy for you to use. All right, good luck, chemists.